These days, when you think of professional wrestling, it probably brings up images of massive global brands and billion dollar corporations, carefully managed superstars with brand deals and movie careers, extortionately expensive pay-per-views, and, uh uncomfortable accusations. But wrestling was once a very different place, a world of small regional promotions and territories, hometown heroes, high-risk matches in sports halls and dimly lit arenas, and the name of one particular family that would forever be associated with this bygone era, the Von Erichs. The story of one of wrestling's most legendary dynasties was filled with real-life triumph, hardship, loss and tragedy, so it was pretty fertile ground for Hollywood to adapt into the kind of biopic that seems to have gained a lot more traction in recent years. And so, the Iron Claw came to be. The only question was whether the film would do justice to the Von Erich family and the world of pro wrestling. And I'm happy to say that for the most part it does, delivering a story that's at times poignant, heartbreaking, inspiring and uplifting, painting a warts and all portrait of a family consumed by ambition, jealousy and greed, but held together by love and loyalty. It's not a perfect film and its attempts to cover so much narrative ground with so many characters inevitably means that some events and subplots don't get as much attention as they deserve, but for the most part it was a solid, engaging and emotionally satisfying movie that helped to shed light on an often misunderstood business. The movie kicks off in 1979 by introducing us to the four brothers of the Von Erich family, two of which are already pro wrestlers in their father's promotion, with the others destined to follow in their footsteps. All four are fanatically loyal to their father Fritz, the hard-driving patriarch of the family who was once a pro wrestler himself and now manages the family promotion, constantly pushing his sons to work harder and even pitting them against each other sometimes. I mean damn man, I know most parents have a favourite kid but you're not supposed to straight up tell them. The narrative mostly revolves around oldest son Kevin, played by Zac Efron and his gigantic fucking face. Seriously, you're never going to convince me the dude wasn't on HGH for this movie. Anyway, whatever. Kevin's probably the most invested in the wrestling business and trains constantly, putting his life and career on the line every night to try to win his father's approval. But you always get the feeling that it's never quite enough. When the US boycott of the 1980 Olympics puts the brakes on Kerry's athletics career, Fritz pushes him to get into the wrestling business instead, and soon the three brothers start to achieve national recognition. Fame, money, success, and all the temptations that come with them quickly follow. But tragedy strikes when one of the brothers dies suddenly on a tour of Japan, a victim of the supposed Von Erich curse. He might be the first, but he's definitely not going to be the last. As the years drag on, a series of tragic accidents and the constant demands of the wrestling business begin to take their toll on the brothers' mental and physical health, threatening to break them apart as the family promotion starts to falter against the mighty WWF. But can Kevin somehow find a way to get out and escape the curse that's dogged his family name? Or is he destined to follow in the footsteps of his siblings? I think it's fair to say that pro wrestling isn't for everyone, especially the murky territory days before the rise of global brands like the WWF, and so a film heavily centred around the sport was always going to have a difficult balancing act to maintain. Go into too much detail about the technicalities and the politics of the business and you'd start to lose regular audiences, but keep it too light on authenticity and you'd fail to win over the legions of wrestling fans that were desperate for a film like this. In this case though, I think the Iron Claw strikes a pretty good balance between the two extremes. Yeah, there's some decent wrestling matches on display, but we mostly get to see the closing moments or the botched moves that result in major injuries. Generally, the film manages not to get too bogged down by the in-ring performances or the political wheeling and dealing that could make or break careers. Director Sean Durkin is apparently a big fan of the sport, so it's impressive that he was able to demonstrate so much restraint here, showing us just enough to give us a flavour of the culture at the time, but never allowing it to overwhelm the central narrative. And that central narrative is a thoughtful and often moving exploration of the dangers of ambition, obsession and parents pushing their children to live up to ideals that they created instead of allowing them to find their own way in life. Mike, for example, aspires to be a musician but instead finds himself railroaded into the wrestling business by his domineering father with tragic results. The others, meanwhile, live in constant fear of him, always trying to impress him and follow in his instructions without question. 
performances are excellent across the board, all four of the brothers are well represented, and some of the actors are a pretty good likeness for the men that they're playing, especially Jeremy White, who's an absolute dead ringer for Kerry. Holt McCallany is one of those guys that seemed to be everywhere in the 2000s and then kind of faded out, so it's great to see him back here as Fritz, the dominant patriarch of the family and the closest thing that the movie has to a villain. The control he exerts over his sons is subtle and insidious, stoking jealousy and resentment with carefully deployed praise, playing them off against each other, promising opportunities to one only to snatch them away at the last moment and give them to another. He's less of a father and more like the manager of a sports team, always looking for some new angle to get the best performance out of his players, with little regard for what it's doing to them emotionally. Like I say, the performances are generally excellent, but Zac Efron steals the show as protagonist Kevin, a man increasingly torn between loyalty to his father and the family business, the trauma of seeing what it's doing to his brothers, and his growing desire to break away and become his own man. And the scene where it finally happens is so carefully built up and explosively delivered that you can't help but be gripped by it, especially the tear-jerking aftermath. If I was to be super critical, I'd say that the film kind of glosses over some of the bigger events happening in the wrestling world to focus on the more intimate family drama stuff, the result being that you sometimes feel like you're missing a broader context for what's happening. The rise of the WWF as a national brand that gradually swallowed up all the smaller promotions was a huge deal at the time, but it's only really covered in a couple of sentences. The film also tends to overlook some of the spectacular successes that the Von Erichs enjoyed, in favour of keeping the tone more sombre and subdued. The narrative covers a period of more than 15 years, but because nobody seems to visibly age throughout the film, you're not always clear on how much time is actually passing. I don't know, it might have been interesting to see the main actors looking increasingly worn out and jaded by their experiences. At the end of the day though, these are relatively minor complaints and they didn't take away too much from my enjoyment of what turned out to be a confident, well-crafted and thoughtfully directed biopic. A movie that deals with tragic events but never devolves into tedious melodrama. And even if you're not super invested in the world of wrestling, I think there's a strong enough story at the core of this film to deliver a poignant, memorable viewing experience that you definitely won't regret. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.